The title of my uh, lecture is, in English, Diversity and Identity, the quest for Polish self-definition. And the Polish title is Różnorodność i Tożsamość, Kwestia Identyfikacji Narodowej w Historii Polski. So I would like to begin today's talk with one of the most important and challenging questions in Polish history. What does it mean to be Polish? Where does the Pole end and the Ukrainian and Lithuanian begin? How does one delineate the boundaries between Polishness and Germanness, as well as Polishness and Jewishness? Are Poles only those who have historically spoken the Polish language? Are Poles only those who identify with Roman Catholicism? Are Poles only members of one social class? Indeed, who is and who is not a real Pole? It is my assertion here that we cannot make sense of Polish history unless we place diversity and multiculturalism front and center. A history of Poland that fails to include Jews, Ukrainians, Germans and Lithuanians would be as flawed as a history of the United States that dealt exclusively with white English-speaking Protestants. We must never forget that the country destroyed by German Nazism and Soviet Communism was a country of diverse languages, religions, traditions and overlapping histories. Today's overwhelmingly Polish and Roman Catholic Poland, the Poland of 2017, is not the norm, but the exception. Seen through this perspective, diversity and identity were always interlinked in Poland's past. Diversity is thus the very beating heart of Polish identity and history. As in American history, Diversity and multiculturalism were deeply politicized topics in Poland. Prior to the late 18th century partitions of Poland, membership in the Polish nation was limited to the upper class, Catholic, Orthodox, and Protestant nobles. Poland's peasants, the vast majority of the residents in the pre-partition state, were not included in the Polish nation. The nobles viewed them as a feudal labor force, devoid of national consciousness and cultural identity. These social elites, many of whom hailed from the Polish heartland, but also from Lithuania, Belarus, and Ukraine, were the only ones educated in the Polish language, legal traditions, and customs. The partitions of Poland and the 123 years of Polish statelessness, however, introduced competing models of modern Polishness. The two most well-known models took at least three generations to develop and reflected the different ways of understanding Polish identity. These two models centered on two very important historical figures. You've probably heard of them. Józef Piłsudski and Roman Dmowski. The ideological dispute between these two men dominated the 19th and 20th century debates about Polish identity and nationhood and continue to shape how many Poles view their identities today. Indeed, Dmowski and Piłsudski represented very different sorts of Polishness and imagined different sorts of Poland. Piłsudski and his followers envisioned a Poland that was multicultural and diverse, a state that embraced cultural diversity and did not distinguish between Poles, Belarusians, Ukrainians, and Jews. According to this mindset, political loyalty and allegiance to Warsaw were the very bedrock of Polish citizenship. This is not unlike our common experience as Americans in the United States. We're all different. We come from diverse ethnic backgrounds. But at the end of the day, we are all 
politically and legally American citizens. Indeed, this is very similar to Piłsudski's model of Polish identity. In fact, the generation of Polish citizens born after World War I learned and spoke Polish at schools and workplaces. While they were at the marketplace, however, they would have most likely heard Yiddish. While traveling through the eastern countryside, they probably heard diverse dialects of Ukrainian and Belarusian. And while aboard a train cutting through the industrial basin of Upper Silesia, they most probably heard German or Silesian. Interwar Polish towns and cities were anywhere between 25 and 40 percent Jewish and synagogues competed in the urban landscape with the great spires of Catholic churches and cathedrals, including the city that I'm from, Kraków. In order to accommodate this reality, Piłsudski articulated a model of Polish identity that was essentially civic, not ethnic. Polish citizenship meant loyalty to the state. Thus, Yiddish, German, Ukrainian, and Belarusian speakers were just as Polish as Spanish speakers are American in the United States. Loyalty, diversity, and multiculturalism were thus inseparable parts of Polish identity. Inclusion and Polishness went hand in glove and they remain the cultural legacy of Piłsudski's movement. But diversity and inclusion were not the only indicators of Polishness. For instance, Roman Dmowski and his National Democrats believed that the Polish state was the exclusive property of ethnic Poles, and they considered those who were not native speakers of Polish, nor the supporters of the Roman Catholic Church, as undesirable minorities. Dmowski openly sought to undermine Piłsudski's plan of creating a multicultural society. Instead, he offered to replace it with an exclusivist model that served the interests of ethnic and Roman Catholic Poles. Indeed, Dmowski particularly distrusted Polish Jews and devoted a lot of his political energy to promoting anti-Semitism, as well as policies that sought to drive Jews out of Poland. Moreover, he was also very intent on forcibly assimilating Ukrainians and Belarusians, who he often likened to half-Poles, half-Russians, who ought to be turned into Poles, whether they like it or not. Dmowski and his kind were nationalists, xenophobes, and anti-Semites. Their dream was a Poland for the Poles, a state that was ethnically and religiously homogenous, and a state in which non-Poles had no role to play. While Piłsudski and Dmowski did not live to see post-World War II Poland, Dmowski's vision of a Poland for the Poles triumphed in the end. World War II transformed Poland by exterminating, enslaving, and exiling people, where for centuries cultural fluidity and diversity were the norm. What the war failed to finish, the communist regime in Poland pledged to complete. As you can imagine, this spelled the end of multicultural homelands and the triumph of the ethnically homogenous nation-state, an overwhelmingly Polish Poland, something that never existed in European history. Polish communists thus capitalized on Nazi and Soviet atrocities and forged a new post-war society. Ironically, in the process, they embraced the ideas of Polish nationalists like Dmowski and created a homogenous society, 97% Polish and 97% Roman Catholic. Nevertheless, Piłsudski's vision of a country that shares the same values, but not necessarily the same ethnicity, 
has not completely been destroyed. In fact, the Piłsudskiite model of a multinational nation, a civic nation, has been resurrected following the collapse of communism in 1989. Polish identity in more recent times has been redefined by Poland's membership in the European Union. With the transition to liberal democracy, the project of Polonization and making Poland Polish became transformed into a project of Europeanization and making Poland European. In fact, Making Poland European, the process begun in the mid-1990s reintroduced the questions that I highlighted earlier. What does it mean to be Polish? Where does the Pole end and the European begin? What is the role of diversity and multiculturalism in the examination of Polish history? And although Poland remains very much a homeland of exclusively ethnic Poles, Interest in Poland's multicultural past has captivated the imagination of a young generation of Polish teachers, professionals, civil servants, historians, and statesmen and women. There is growing consensus in Poland today that it is impossible to truly understand Polish history without a solid understanding of Poland's Jewish, Ukrainian, Lithuanian, Belarusian, and German past. Multiculturalism and diversity may not be the lived reality in the Poland of 2017, but it certainly is a very real looking glass into Poland's multicultural European roots and identity. Bardzo dziękuję. Thank you very much.